Um, I think it's the, the same uh, story as uh, in December. Um, it is um, something of a few anonymous <coughs> players. And how can you defend yourself uh, against a lie? Um, I've decided to read out one um, comment that I received. It, it is from the Netherlands. Um, it's from Barbara Byron. She is the key person who wrote about all the views in gymnastics, and she sent me this yesterday, I've translated it, and I've asked her if I could use it. I don't put my hands in the fire for anyone, but for you and your pedagogy pedagogically responsible interaction with players, I do that 100%. I know from so many players how important you are or have been for them inside out and outside the, the pitch. You go beyond everything to choose the best for a person. Everyone can learn something from that. You can defend yourself against a lie. And that's all I want to say. We are going to uh, a World Cup. We have done phenomenally with this team and we have never been able to do that if our bond with each other would have been so strong and so positive. Um, so that's all I want to say. <coughs> I'm afraid it will follow me during my life, and that has been the agenda also for the players, and it's not only the players. Have you spoken to the players since the most recent allegations? Of course I spoke with uh, the leading players, um, and um, yeah, they, they all said that they came individually to me, that they hold my back, is that the right? Hold yeah. my back? Um, and that nobody, I've asked specifically if they've ever experienced anything. And um, we go to a World Cup. And they said, so they said, no, never. Um, but we are going to a World Cup. It's so fantastic. We have, um, we lost European Championships in, in, in Ukraine. And back then we were sitting in the dressing room saying to each other, whatever happens, we are going to the World Cup. And that bond, and you've all been seeing and following that, has been so close um, that this team deserves that we focus on the World Cup. They've done everything they could to get there. They do everything to be ready. And uh, this distraction, the timing of it is wrong. Um, and the allegations are false. That's all I want to say. Can I ask you from the captain to the player point of view who has been? We've been so busy. Um, I think even yesterday when I think the off the ball stuff came out, um, we're coming from training back to dinner and then over to family house to meet the D shock and the government. Um, of course, it's a, a real negative distraction, but for us, we're solely focusing on what we have going forward. We have a game against one of the top five teams in the world tomorrow here in Tala Stadium against France. A massive send-off game in front of our home fans that I wasn't able to play two weeks ago, so I'm really looking forward to, to be able to be there with the girls tomorrow with that. Um, and we've got a massive four or five weeks ahead of us in Australia, and for us, Yes, of course, it's a lot of external noise, but our fully focus is on these next few weeks um, and keeping together as a, as a group. And as a group, you put your support here as well as United. Yeah, we've, we've built something over the last two and a half years, you know. Um, we've worked really hard together to contain the culture we have within the group um, in terms of, yeah, on and off the pitch. Um, we've had highs and we've had lows over the last few years. Um, and our jobs as, as staff and as players is to, to put in high quality performances for our country and that's what we're looking to do for the next few weeks. Hi there. I understand you not want to talk about this new allegation, but I understand that it was you yourself who went to the IDF to talk about this again after it was brought up at the end of last year. So what was the message that you were trying to get out there? I have said it's time that the double standards I have looked into. 226 coaches having perceived the same thing. That is what I said. What do you mean by that? What I said in April that um, 226 female coaches in the US 
have experienced the same thing. And that is what I said when they came to me with uh, some kind of investigation about um, player safety, which I fully supported and immediately cooperated in. And I said, when the, are you going to um, do something and support the coaches? And, um, and what are you going to do about the double standards? That's what I would say, nothing else. Do you feel that if you were a male coach, the reaction to this would have been the same? Oh, go through, through the allegations and just put Pep Guardiola or Louis van Gaal or Mourinho in that, then you would actually laugh about it. Because it's all about coaching. It's all about coaching. It's not about anything else. So I don't want to go into the details because um, it, it is nonsense, it's untrue. And uh, as I said before, there's great safety in the truth. And um, that truth is with me. I mean, the people around me, the people who know me, the people who saw me working know that it's not true. There's not one single per person um, who knows me for a long time has put any question mark about behind it. So um, that is my safety and that's what I'm carrying with me. I need to have my full energy for, for these players. Um, and uh, many players came to me um, to support and to ask what the, what the crap and what the nonsense it was, because they know me so differently, um, as well as from all the other teams that I've been coaching. So I want to leave it with that. Um, I will never win from a lie. Um, that is clear now. Whatever you do, you don't win from a lie. And uh, I have to uh, live with it and carry it with me the rest of my life, I'm afraid. Thank you. Jess. How do you feel about these allegations? <coughs> Yeah, like I mentioned to Tony, the the timing of course isn't great. Um, we're we've obviously went through it back in December. Um, and we've yeah, obviously it's something we we've spoken about. But ultimately, like we have, we've got a game tomorrow, so our sole focus has to has to be fine tuned in on that. Um, the the timing of the release of the article is like I said, it's it's. It is what it is, um, but it's it's obviously frustrating because this is such a a massive time in Ireland for women's football, um, and it's it's yeah it's frustrating to see um, that we we can't be here talking about our, our massive say, send off game tomorrow and the fact we're heading to our first major tournament. I know we'll touch on that, but um, yeah, of course it takes the sting out of it um, from from the team's point of view. And would you say that you speak for the whole team, all twenty three? They're happy with zero foul answers to those allegations? I can't answer for each and every player. Um, of course, Vera has this style of, of management um, that we're used to now over the, the last two years. It's something we've worked um, together. We've, we've argued with each other, of course. Like You're never going to get on 100% with your manager at times. She pushes me and I push her. Um, so, in, in my opinion, um, and from my personal relationship with Vera, of course, yeah, we've, we've clashed many a times, um, but we're always professional enough to, to make sure we are fully focused for the team. Um, and we know both of our, our hearts are in the right place in terms of wanting what's best for the Ireland women's national team going forward. And again, of course, the article timing is not great, um, but our full focus will be France tomorrow and then going into um, Colombia next week and then obviously kicking off um, our first ever World Cup. And France, like you said, one of the uh, top five nations in the world. What are you expecting from that? I mean, what an exciting game, right? Um, it's, yeah, it's massive to have France come into town um, in front of our home fans, young girls coming, young boys coming to cheer us on to see one of the best teams in the world. Um, I definitely think they've got to be right up there in terms of World Cup favourites, the talent they have and the depth they have in their squad. and. I think the flow they have right now, um, to Henry Renard coming back in um, and, and taking over is uh, something really that's exciting for them. Um, we've looked at a lot of footage um, and yeah, they've, get, they've got a bit of everything there. They're, um, yeah, they're physical, they're quick, um, strong and, and, and quite good in, in small areas in terms of pass. And so we'll, uh, yeah, we'll have to be on a uh, full alert tomorrow to, to make sure we, we can stop them and, and uh, try to get positive results for our fans. And, and Vera, how difficult has it been to prepare for this France game knowing that 
they've only recently changed the manager themselves and had to face what's right there. If, um, um, they have played a few games under him, um, so that is enough to know what, what changes there are. The players are more or less the same, we all know them. Um, they are very fast, they are very um, good in their quick possession of play, attacking over the wings, the rotations that they use, um, getting beyond the defence, so we know what we can, uh, what we can uh, how do you say, expect for tomorrow. I did not. I did not approach. They approach. No, they approached me with a survey. So I said, and I fully immediately sent it back, and I said, and when are you going to take charge or take responsibility of the, the double standards for female coaches? Do you think we have to follow up an international coach after they did that today for you? No. Sorry? You, you approached him. You, you asked him that to reopen the school. No, I did not. I asked, when are you going to do something about the double standards for female coaches and instead of only the players? Okay, but they have done that, correct? Sorry? They, they did that. They addressed your... You asked them to address no, your because No, no, they did not. They did not. So what's your opinion of the exact right that the school should be? Um, I have... Um, I had to answer. I did not want to answer. I said I'm not going to answer this because they were uh, doing the same thing and getting the same allegation in instead of instead of going into double standards. And um, so I did not want to answer, but then they said, "Well, we're going to write it anyway, so will you answer or not?" I've got a whole list of proof of support of players of Houston Nash of what happened. It's not used, so that was also there on the agenda. Well, with this story not gone away, it, it seems like it has calmed down. No, I, I was not. I, I was flabbergasted that this was coming back to me. The only, the only sense that I said was, um, when are you going to deal with the double standards for female coaches? Four hundred and twenty-six. That's the only. That's the only thing I asked. Of course, it is a friendly game and a preparation game, but we're going to start with what we think is at this moment the strongest lineup. And Katie, if we're going to be visiting Parisville coming out tomorrow, it's the final day of on home soil. There's already a massive amount of people going to be traveling over. What would you like to say to I suppose all those kind of boys that will be watching tomorrow and bring home the dog? Yeah, I mean like like I said, it's it's still such a special feeling. Um for me personally, I've, I've obviously seen it two weeks ago um, when we when the girls um, played Zambia and um, just being around, meeting the fans, getting pictures and um, being there. But I haven't actually played in Tala since the Finland game, um, which was last September, last September. Um, so no, I'm, I'm so excited. Um, I can't wait. I want everybody to enjoy tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a fantastic occasion um, and I hope it really sets the precedent of the buzz that hopefully we can create for the nation when we go down to Australia. Um, if you're not on the bandwagon yet, get on the bandwagon. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm so excited for it. Sorry, I can drive the bus, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, honestly, there's a, a squad there of, of 25 other players um, that are so excited um, to, to come here tomorrow and to play and to perform. Um, the girls have been tremendous and how hard they, they've worked over the last couple of weeks through the highs and lows of it as well, obviously with the disappointment of, of some players, you know. So it's been um yeah, it's been a, a crazy four weeks, um, lots of hard work and we're just hoping we can put on a show and showcase ourselves in front of our home fans, um, which is always a really proud thing to do. So I can't hear you, sorry. Sorry. Uh, the German question is whether you guys stand to support the uh, back in December when the report came out initially uh, had was pretty quick. Uh, whether you guys managed to implement due diligence and that, or was that a 
Yeah, I mean, at the, the time, I think it was December, yeah, December, um, we, yeah, there's, there's always sort of constant dialogue. I think we've never really had that dialogue in the past, um, not just in regards to obviously the situation in December, but in general, um, there has been open dialogue and there is conversations um, that do go on um, and, yeah, which obviously, which obviously then the FAI then chose to release a statement, but there is constant dialogue between the women's national team and the FAI and um, yeah, that relationship has grown over the last few years and will continue to grow and we'll be as transparent to them like they are to us, um, which is um, yeah, which is obviously a, a nice thing because we know we can um, speak up um, and our voices will be heard. That is um, the coaches that have been fired in the US over the last two years in college, university and professional, female coaches, soccer, with exactly the same allegations that were handed to me. So again, just put a male name in it and look at it again and then you'll have your answer. They've done that to me, so I did not ask for it. It came to me. I think uh, the, the first thing I did. Was I think to, yeah, sorry, of course, to uh, yeah. yeah. But like any internal conversations will happen internally, and um, we are focusing on a massive game tomorrow and a massive tournament and five weeks ahead for us. Um, and that's our job, that, and that will be our focus going forward. Um, and those conversations will happen internally. I have asked. I, I have asked. Literally, did you experience ever once one mo moment? And please ask also if if you need to others one moment that you felt uncomfortable with the way that I am coaching. And they said, no, you're direct, but it's clear, it's honest, and no, never. That's the senior players, including me. Okay, so if that's said to me, then yeah, because I, I hesitate. Also, if I read that, I'm thinking. So therefore, I don't want to go into those details because it's, it is such an incredible nonsense. Taking the pills and that is abuse. Taking the pills and that is abuse and so on. That's like that, that's, I think the word taken that there, you know, there's something that you can take in, in dealing with a, a manager who's got kind of, you know, a style which maybe people, you know, other people don't get. But it might be quiet from there because maybe this was, you know, staying quiet and then something comes out like that. And it could be a player who's dropped or a player who just feels in themselves a different thing to what they've been doing. And I think that's probably the concern that maybe people might have when they walk up to have and talk about the fact that then all of a sudden the player goes, well, and then it starts again, you know? Would you have that kind of worry or would you would you recognise that, that kind of worry is around the place? Yeah, of course. Like it's my job and as captain I'm responsible to as the leaders in the group, obviously it's not just myself, we've got fantastic experienced internationals that, yeah, of course, monitor the the overall environment and atmosphere of the group. And I mean, you'll see tonight when we go out to train, we're all in a, a good place um, and we're ready to, to perform tomorrow. Um, I know what you're saying, um, but also I, I can't predict what, what's going to happen in the future. I've got a group of, of 25 teammates um, and a fantastic backroom staff that are fully focused on, on what we've got to, to do and to concentrate on in these next few weeks going to our first ever major tournament. And um, yeah, of course, it's, it's frustrating that we even have to be, be talking about this. Here, just quickly on the contract, there was a decision we were talking a couple of weeks ago with the FBI and having anything with that. Has this affected all that? Or where is that? That is something that you need to ask the FAA. I've said what I had to say about it, and um, yeah, that's You're still hopeful. I'm not hope <coughs> hopeful. Hopeful is if I'm defending or something. I said 
So I'm happy in Ireland that I, Ireland has embraced me and um, that I feel very, very comfortable here. That's what I said. You have a contract call still ongoing with Kim? Uh, yes, but Kim Mettler is the one who's doing that, so you need to ask her. I'm not getting involved in that. See, it's not, it's not safe. You see, um, I'm happy here. I want to stay here, um, and we'll see what is happening. Okay. What about you, Peggy? I mean, would you like to see Kira stay on, notwithstanding, regardless, the last twenty-five years? But if, just in terms of, of, of bringing the squad forward into the campaign. Yeah, look, obviously it's it's not my decision to make. I know I've spoken to Vera um, before and we've been on a journey these last few years together. Um, like I touched on earlier in the press conference, we've we've had highs and lows and we've and we've been through a lot and it's gonna yeah, it's gonna maximise um both of our efforts and energy in these next five weeks to 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 push and drive the team. Um to yeah, to hopefully have a successful tournament or as successful as can be, you know. Um but yeah, obviously, like time will tell. Um, me and Vera have, have worked together for the last few years, and um, we'll 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 see. Vera, in terms of tomorrow, um, you mentioned the strongest team in, in that same team going into the Great Cup. Do you make a lot of changes? Do you try and give players minutes in the second half? How do you balance that? Uh, that depends on what we need uh, tomorrow. Um, so there's players that. Maybe not, uh, that we did maybe not want to play 90 minutes, and there's players that we maybe want to see, and the game will tell us if we need to, uh, to change. It's a result game, so it's about results. We including there's a few players that might need uh, some protection. Can I ask just uh, on a personal level, um, has it been revealing the last 24 hours? Of course, what do you think? Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course, I've got a, I've got a bunch of, of players. If you see the video, if you see us on the pitch, how close we are together and how much fun we have together and how loud everybody is. And, um, and then you hear things of that and that influences that atmosphere. Of course, that is training, of course, because it's such a nonsense. And um, I, I promise to not go into detail, so I, I, I don't do that. But um, if, again, if all proof that is proven against it, whether it's players or whether it's an, an assistant coach or whether it is cards or text messages that have handed in to the athletic, they haven't used it. That's a, that says it all. That's an agenda. Has it taken the, you know, the, the World Cup starts, uh, has, it, has it taken the shade off this once in a lifetime experience for you as a coach? Did you want to coach your team? Well, the, the, uh, the only thing which you can say about that is when the World Cup starts, how we enjoy it and, and how we can manage that as a group, um, how strong we are. And um, that is something that is really important, that we keep that bond and that nothing comes in between us, because that bond I've never felt before. Especially because I was given either the choice to react on the allegations or uh, that they would write it without anything. And so I was forced. I was forced to react. And, but then uh, proof has not been taken into the article, and I find that very um, how to say that very hurting. That hurts. That proof is not been taken on. There is a person that has targeted to destroy my career and has influenced a few, and that's why I want to keep it. After the, yes, and um, this agenda is known, this agenda has been on Twitter, this agenda is with me, uh, and I've said after the World Cup I'm going to see if I'm going to take legal actions, uh, but for now it is um, the, the strategy works, that's clear. Yeah, that's what I said at lunchtime, and uh, yeah, 
you, you know, everybody makes mistakes. I'm not saying that I have not made mistakes, but I've never ever done anything even close to what is written there. In the tone, eh? in the tone that is said. Yes, I've taken the pills, but I, I, I'm a coach. Yeah, we did not have heart, uh, heart rate. And I've asked every single time, can I touch you? Pulse or not? Yeah, fine. It's not ever one way or the other. So it is, if you, again, if you would put a male coach there, you would be. Uh, that's not secondary level. This person is from the US. Can you name that person here? No. Why, why not? Because of I need to see what the legal actions could be from that. Because it's someone from Houston Dash. Is it a member of like the uh, It's no, from, not from Houston Dash. Okay, thanks very much. It's been a pleasure talking with the World Cup, guys. <laughs> really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you.